Simon here, and today I want to talk to you guys about design elements and principles, uh, what they are, how they work, uh, and what they offer to new publication managers like yourselves, uh, as well as getting into the specifics of one such design element, visual hierarchy. Uh, we had some great presentations on Monday uh, with Joe, Willie, Corey, and uh, Noah. Uh, Joe and Willie focused on specifics uh, with uh, colors and typography, respectively and uh, they did a great job with that. Today I'm going to go into visual hierarchy and how it's used in publication design. So first off, what is a design element? <clears throat> um, a design element is basically anything that is used to give your project a little more flair, to, to spice things up, uh, as well as emphasize the point of the project. Most design publications have some kind of point that they're trying to drive home. Uh, we generally don't make something just because, and we don't, we don't put it out there unless there's some kind of audience that we're trying to reach uh, and some point that we're trying to get across. Uh, design elements are used to help an audience understand and retain that point that the designer is trying to make. Uh, something to make it more memorable and uh, more aesthetically pleasing to look at. Something to just make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, you see a lot of design elements here. Uh, color, which is uh, the idea of using colors not only with text in relation to the background, but also in the background itself and in the images that are also uh, most likely on the publication design. Um, to either show contrast or to match and show rhythm. Uh, again, Joe kind of talked about analogous colors and contrasting colors. It's that, that kind of idea. We also see texture, size, shape, line, all these different things to, to kind of emphasize what we're working on and to make it look better, to improve it in some way. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the specifics of visual hierarchy. So first off, what is hierarchy? Just in general, the, the kind of blank term. Most of us probably think of some kind of government or organization when we hear that word. And that's not incorrect. Uh, hierarchy really is anything that is ranked in some way based on importance. Um, in other words, <clears throat> the arrangement of uh, different things based on how important they are. Uh, we see this all over the place in government and different organizations uh, with you know, CEO or CFO and then the president, vice president, uh, all the way down. It's kind of like this pyramid design. Uh, we see hierarchy all over the place. And that's why I like it. That's why I really uh, enjoyed researching it and doing this project and presentation on it. Uh, and that's why I hope you guys enjoy it too. Uh, anytime you see something when you're working with design like this and you see it in uh, all over the place and in every other aspect, all kinds of different fields. Um, hopefully that kind of shows the importance of it and uh, you know really puts emphasis on it. Uh, it's got a, a ton of uses. <clears throat> so in terms of visual hierarchy, uh, it's the idea basically that you can use the elements, the different things that we talked about before, the color, the type, the, the shape and size uh, of different elements uh, in order to create a sense of importance. Not only are you drawing a reader's eye, or uh, excuse me, getting ahead of myself. Um, you want to create kind of a focal point and then uh, create flow from that focal point. So the goal here is to not only draw your reader's eye uh, to one spot, <clears throat> but you're hopefully directing where their eyes will go next. Um, so in this example here, I really like this example because it, it shows very clearly um, wh exactly what hierarchy is and, and visual hierarchy and how it's used in design. Uh, we've got this uh, big, bold, contrasting white text on this gray background uh, that just says, your eyes here, clear and to the point. Uh, immediately, I'm sure that's where most of our eyes went. Then you have uh, smaller text that says, then here, underneath, <clears throat> in parentheses, in that same contrasting white text on that gray background. Uh, literally, basically, you can follow it. Your eyes here, then here, and that's exactly what happened to most of us, I'm sure. Um, Kind of a, not a great example, because I'm not sure how great the uh, text appears on a, a screen like this, but in the bottom corner here, you can, say, you can see it says, isn't that fascinating? Uh, and much smaller text with a, a yellow font to kind of show uh, that it's not as important as the other stuff on the page. It's much smaller, but it also has that yellow, yellow text to draw, uh, draw your eyes away from the bigger text in its own unique way. A uh, really great, really clear example of how visual hierarchy works. Uh, but visual hierarchy doesn't only apply to things uh, that are really noticeable, like the color, typography, and all that, those other things. It also applies to things that are often overlooked, things like the opacity of an image and like different shadows and things like that. 
So <clears throat> with this image, uh, here we sh uh, see again, it shows visual hierarchy, uh, but purely from an image standpoint. There's no text, there's no anything else to get, uh, really get in the way. Uh, right away, our eyes most likely jump to the darker image of the bird. Um, and this image actually labeled kind of where your eyes most likely went. Uh, it's got a little one, again, because of the screen, I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but it's got the one next to the bird to kind of show that that's where your eyes most likely went. And then you've got different numbers to showcase the other things. Um, the faded images aren't really the priority of this image, and that's pretty clear. Our brain recognizes that and uh, focuses on that, focuses on the bird and kind of blocks out all the other things temporarily. After we look at the bird, we kind of start to notice everything else and we branch out. We don't really notice the background right away because there's still images here that we haven't looked at. So there's different shading, there's different, uh, you know, some images are lighter than others. Um, and we go from one to the next, maybe not in any particular order in this case, uh, but they are there. Obviously this is important, but what makes it so useful? Uh, in other words, why as new publication managers is this something you know, worth taking account of? Uh, we see this everywhere. In the examples that I listed before, but also in design itself. It's all over the place. No matter what kind of publication you're making, whether it's an infographic, a pamphlet, or a flyer, magazine cover, anything that you're making, uh, we see this. So in this example here, we have this newspaper with big dark letters, uh, you know, changes coming, extra, extra. These are the focus points of the front page, and you could probably see it from a mile away. Uh, what better way to get your point across to a large audience than visual hierarchy? Just showcasing, you know, these big, bold letters. Uh, showing the importance in something like this is exactly what you need. Uh, we see smaller text in between the titles. Uh, most of us probably can't even see it, to be honest. I don't know if the guys in the back of the room can see it, uh, because it's so small. In other words, it's just not as important. It's something to read once you've gotten the, the main details out of the titles. So here's another image that I really, really like. Uh, visual hierarchy, bright blue letters. Right in the middle, it asks a question, where did you look first? Uh, and I can almost guarantee that that's not where you looked first. Even though it appears right in the ceiling, or right in the center, uh, large, bright, outlined blue letters took a little bit of the, of the spotlight from it. Um, besides being a great example of what visual hierarchy is, it also shows the power and the whole point of the concept. Um, the goal is, of this image was to show the importance of visual hierarchy, and it proved that while using visual hierarchy. Um, if you have a message you want to get across, this idea will help you do so. Uh, on my way over to class today, unfortunately I don't have an example of it, but I'm sure you guys have all seen it. There's uh, flyers all over the place as we near the end of the semester. Um, how you can sell your books back to the bookstore and get some money back. It says cash right across in uh, big green letters, and then underneath it, once you, appear, once you get closer in smaller blue and red text, it says, sell us your books. And uh, again, I mean, you see it here at Mount just all the time. This concept of visual hierarchy and kind of resizing and changing the colors around to make it more appealing, but also show what's most important first. Um, all these different things are super important, typography, color, all these design elements as new publication managers are something that you definitely want to keep in mind. Visual hierarchy, however, really has a lot of potential and control and power when you're using it in publications design. It gets you, it, it directs your reader exactly where you want it to, and if used correctly, it easily can make the difference in a great publication or a not so great publication. So. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you got something out of this. Uh, if there are any questions, that would be fine.